the odds. This is a big step up for Drian Francisco, but his management wants him and needs for him to get to that next level where he's considered in the top 10 in the junior Bantams, and this is how you do it. You've got to take chances. You've got to fight the best if you want to be the best. Vasquez in the silver trunks, Francisco in the colors of the Filipino flag. Can you imagine being compared to Roberto Duran? I mean, at that level? I mean, of course, he's not quite at that level, but uh, he is the most popular boxer, boxer in Panama right now. The former world champion, WBA flyweight champion, and light flyweight champion. Won that title back in 2005 and 2006. The 2006 was the flyweight where he lost or defeated Sakata in Paris only to lose that title to Sakata some seven months later. So it was a short-lived WBA flightweight championship. He held on to the light flightweight championship for just about a year when he defeated Vives Mendoza in Panama, only to retire Mendoza after KOing him. I barely recognized Roberto Vasquez from yesterday at the weigh-in. Oh, yeah. He had a little trouble getting to the 115 uh, uh, limit. He was over by a pound and a half, and it took him two hours to take off the weight, and uh, he looked positively gaunt. His, according to his manager, Carlos uh, Gonzalez, last night, six hours after the weigh-in, he had put on 22 pounds. He was up to 137. That's incredible. And certainly looks like the bigger boxer here against his opponent, Drian Francisco. Known widely here in the Philippines, but that's just about it. His last fight was April 19th in Quezon City when he KO'd the Indonesian Sharil Fabanyo. But outside of the Philippines, you know, he is a relative unknown, only 26 years of age. In fact, uh, that equals the age of Roberto Vasquez. So definitely not a newbie as far as age is concerned, but has 18 fights to his credit. He is undefeated at this time with 13 knockouts. They call him Gitan Kamau, Golden Fist here in the Philippines. And as my esteemed colleague said, certainly the biggest fight of his young career. As he goes up against a well-skilled and a former champion in Roberto Vasquez. And you know, you mentioned about the, the weight problem. You know, he has had that problem in making weights, even in the lower weights at 108 and 112 pounds. This is only his second fight at 115. He lost his first fight to the very talented and world-rated Hugo Caceres from Mexico. The that, that fight was in Panama City. Yeah, the, fa uh, the fans uh, acknowledged a flying left hand by Francisco. As we are approaching the end of the opening round. Oh, and a nice flurry. These guys didn't want to quit. Add a couple of more seconds to the opening. His last fight, Roberto Vasquez, lost a close decision to the number one WBA contender, Hugo Cazares. That was held in Panama City earlier this year. March 24th, so I think a lot of these world championship fighters, they have few and far in between fights. And surely the ring rust, you know, can set in. It might take a, ring, uh, a round or two to, to get his boxing feet back on, and a nice left hand by Francisco stuns the, the former world champ. You know, in just looking at the, a couple of uh, the, the early minutes of rounds one and two, it, it seems Francisco, when throwing punches, seems a little off balance. Don't you get that, yes, that notion? Does. Crafty fighter. And without a doubt, the intangible here is the fact that Francisco fighting in the Philippines. This is a the biggest stage he's ever fought on. Going right into the attack was Rian Francisco. You know, I asked him, some say that he isn't ready for a, a boxer of Vasquez's caliber, just not ready. And I said, how do you answer that? He says, yeah, he acknowledged this is a big fight, but his trainer, his team, and even himself, they say, this is his time. Oh, and a nice left jab. Follows up with a nice overhand right that's blocked by Vasquez. But this is his time, he says. And you know, we talked about the off balance, off balance, being off balance. 
by Francisco, and there's a good evidence there as he goes flying into the ropes. Yeah, very unorthodox style. One thing you notice about Francisco, he's not nervous. He's very relaxed, even so much to the point where he had to, he corrected the ring announcer at the introductions to make sure he got his province correct. You know, so he, he's very relaxed. And a very smart guy, not just a smart boxer, but this is something that you don't normally find in the, in the fight game. He's a college graduate, went to San Sebastian College and has earned his degree in commerce. That's very unusual in boxing here in the Philippines. Well, just not in the Philippines. I would say all around the world. Sure. Not... Do you see that? He throws. <laughs> this is, he reminds me of like uh, uh, Hasim Hamed. You know, just throws punches from all angles. And that has brought this partisan Filipino crowd to its feet here in the Cuneta Astrodome. Francisco's feeling it. He's getting some confidence. Less than 10 left to go here in the second round. As Vasquez. Oh, and a nice left jab. A lot of name dropping in his corner. He, he is trained by his brother, Roger Vasquez, a former WBA Central American champion, and Rogelio Cousins, who have trained the notables of the likes of Roberto Duran, Hilaro Zapata, and Alfonso Lopez. So some in good instruction and advice in the corner of the former world champion, Roberto Vasquez, as we are now into round three, scheduled for 12. Now Vasquez, uh... This is a bit of a crossroads fight for him. His, his earlier career where he won two world titles is pretty much behind him now. He's moved up to junior bantamweight and he lost his first fight at this weight of 115. And again, we talked about the motivational problems. Does he still want to be a world champion? And can he carry whatever power and speed he had at the earlier weights, at the lower weights, into this higher weight class? Well, you know, Ted, we were talking before this bout about the pressure perhaps on the shoulders of Roberto Vasquez well for sure Just the shouldering you know the 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 pride and the pride of boxing in his native country of Panama well the press is very hard on him in Panama the, the boxing is probably the most popular sport in Panama along with baseball so uh, they take a keen interest in it and they will crucify him for sure if he doesn't win this fight. He's definitely expected to beat Francisco, especially in the eyes of Panamanians. For some reason, the unorthodox and the, the off-balance shots coming from Francisco, I don't know if Vasquez is able to figure him out just yet. Perhaps never seen a fighter like him. Great counterpunch from Francisco. Oh, straight left hand found and a right it's found it. its mark. This is a little bit of Luisito Espinosa. This is not a Pacquiao here. Espinosa was slick and could come at you from all angles and actually had pretty decent power. Body shot by Vasquez. Straight left scores by Francisco. You know, what I'm surprised is, 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 is speed. I would think that boxers at, at this weight class would be a little bit faster with the hand speed. And I just haven't seen that. I, you know, I would think that if this guy was in the same, out of the same country that a Roberto Duran had come from, you know, the, the hand speed would have been you know, a little bit better, and I, I just haven't seen it thus far. Don't forget, he put on 22 pounds in a matter of hours yesterday, so even his manager, Carlos Gonzalez, says that that affects his speed. Obviously, that's going to affect his speed. Tough round to score. Going to the fourth. 